Hey, this is Kelly with IAC, and I am at the testing facility in Jeffersonville, Indiana. It's hot. And today we're going to talk about temperature issues with compressors, and we'll look at the primary causes of those temperature issues, whether it be, you know, low oil level, a dirty cooler, or maybe even a bad thermal valve. And we'll look at how that thermal valve works, how to troubleshoot when it's not working properly, and even how to replace it. So let's go. Typically, the first thing we want to check whenever we have a high temperature issue is our fluid level. And that can be found here. This is a bullseye sight glass, and we should see fluid in it with the machine running. If we don't, we shut the machine off, allow it to cool, and that's when we can best check our fluid level. Now, fluid starvation does not always mean that the fluid level is low. It could be caused by a restriction in the fluid filter, which simple solution error is we replace the fluid filter. It could be caused by the internal collapse of a rubber hose. Um, that, another telltale sign of that is you'll start to get some oil seeping through the outer covering of the hose. And lastly, which cannot be found on this machine, could be a malfunction of a fluid stop valve, which is typically found in older machines or in two-stage machines. If we've ruled out low oil level or restriction from causing our temperature issues, the next place we want to check would be the cooler package. We can visually inspect it to see if it's working properly, but we could also check it with a temp gun and verify that we have a 30 to 40 degree drop from the oil going into the cooler to the oil going out. Simple solution for that is if you've got an issue with a dirty cooler is to blow it out with compressed air. If you've had a fluid leak or if there's airborne oils present to, that makes that cooler sticky, you may want to remove the cooler from the machine, degrease it and pressure wash it. Another thing we want to make sure is that the fan rotation is correct. We always want the heat moving away from the compressor. So once we've checked our fluid level and the cooler condition, we verified that everything's okay there. What we may want to check next is the thermal valve. The way the thermal valve functions, it functions just like a thermostat in your car and that when the oil temperature is low, it bypasses the thermal valve and the cooler and is directly injected into the air in. As temperature comes up, the thermal valve actuates and begins to send fluid through the oil cooler back here and then through the fluid filter and inject it into the air end. It's important to understand and remember that there is, should be a 30 to 40 degree drop between the temperature we would see here versus what we would see here. If we don't have that, it could be the result of a thermal valve malfunction or even a V-cup seal failure. So now that we've gained an understanding of how this works, and also what to look for as far as its malfunction, let's take a look at how we replace a thermal valve element in a V-cup seal. So on this particular unit, this is the thermal valve housing here, and the oil is being brought up out of the sump into the thermal valve housing. At startup and until it gets to temperature, flow is directly through the thermal valve housing through the filter and being injected into the air end. Once it reaches mixing temperature, a portion of that oil will be redirected through here to go through the fluid cooler in the back and the return line coming here, bringing a mixture of oil or a full flow of cooled oil through the fluid filter and being injected into the machine. So we're gonna remove these four bolts and I already have these pipes up here loosened, but I left it on to support the weight of the assembly when I swing it out. With all the bolts out, we can then pull back the assembly and we can see our thermal valve element. So this is a thermal valve element where it's very much like the thermostat in your car and that once the oil temperature reaches a certain level, it will allow it to flow through the cooler to maintain a target temperature range. And one thing I would like to point out is that some models use an O-ring for sealing, and others will use a gasket. So just pay particular attention when you pull it apart. Now inside here is a V-cup seal, which can be seen here. Now this V-cup seal needs to be replaced whenever you replace the element itself, and you always need to have the V portion of the V-cup seal going against the flow of oil. So if oil is flowing this way, it'll hit that V-cup and expand it outwards, sealing that element. 
So now we have the thermal valve element that we're going to install back into the machine. We've already replaced our V-cup seal. So we'll just pop our element back in there. Place the O-ring. Now I've always found that it's best to use a little bit of oil to lubricate that O-ring just to make sure that it sticks inside the assembly and doesn't fall out during reassembly. And then we'll just bolt it back up. And the thermal valve is done. I thought it was important, since we're on the subject of thermal valves, to bring you out to a different machine to show you that the location physically is not always the same. On this particular machine, the thermal valve can be located here. And while this is the element that we were looking at and replacing on the other machine, this is the thermal valve element for this one. There are many other locations, many other types, and if you simply just trace out your injection lines, Somewhere between the sump and the cooler package, you will find that thermal valve element. If you need any assistance with locating, troubleshooting, or repairing any of these temperature issues, feel free to give our experts a call here at Industrial Air Centers. The last thing we want to talk about is high ambient temperature. It's about 90 degrees in here and I'm sweating. If it's hot to me, it would probably be hot to the compressor as well. Besides affecting the reliability of the compressor, High ambient temperature can also affect the treatment package downstream of the compressor. If we introduce high inlet temperature to a refrigerated air dryer, we could possibly cause it to fault out on a high head pressure. Besides that, there is also an effect in moisture content. Every 20 degree increase in temperature doubles the amount of moisture that a compressor ingests and sends down line. So if we can reduce that temperature 20 degrees, we cut the moisture content in half. This is a 50 horsepower compressor and could easily, on a day like this, make 30, 35, 40, even 45 gallons of water. So you always want to make sure to keep as much clean, fresh, and cool air coming to the compressor as possible. Once again, I'm Kelly McClellan, training specialist for industrial air centers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. Hopefully you learned something from it. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, keep it cool.